I love printmaking. I also love horses, so why not combine them? Welcome to my blog adventures of returning to printmaking after eight years. This is also my very first time printing on fabric without a press, so let's figure this out together. For this project, I wanted to transfer some previous digital sketches I created in the Sketch app. I love transforming digital art into analog art form, so this was really up my alley. I'm also using these Speedy Carve soft rubber blocks from Speedball. They are true to their name while still holding a lot of detail, and that's perfect because I have some finely detailed lines in these sketches. Right after printing with my inkjet, I like to immediately apply a thin layer of slow dry acrylic mediums to my block. Before that acrylic medium dries, I press the freshly printed digital drawing I sketched earlier onto them. A plastic paper folder helps transfer the ink. It's not perfect, but it's close enough, and I can refine it with a marker as needed. Of course, I always grab my beloved micron markers, and then I remember they smudge on materials like this. Sharpie markers to the rescue. <laughs> Why I never grabbed these first, I'll never know. This is of course just one of many ways to transfer an image to a block. There's also the option to draw directly on the block instead, or just start carving. I also like to trim the excess rubber carefully for a cleaner print. Before I carve, I also like to tint my block with some colored ink so it's easier to see where I carved and where I still need to. I use lino carving tools ranging from this budget-friendly speedball set to this mid-tier wooden set. The three I use the most are the small V-shape, the small U, and the larger U-shape tools. And now I just settle in for a nice meditative carving session. Depending on the complexity of the design, this can take me anywhere from an hour to several hours spread out over a few days. I make sure to always keep my fingers away from the blades because they are pretty sharp. Next, I clean off the acrylic medium by soaking my blocks in warm, soapy water and gently rubbing the acrylic away. This step is where I start to get excited because it's my first look into what these projects will actually look like. It's where they start to come to life. I try to keep my workspace clean with newsprint and a sheet of plexi. Glass is best, but the plexi is all I have in this size at the moment. I'm trying out a new brand of traditional oil-based inks for these shirts from Cranfield. Previously, I've used Gamblin Relief inks, which I love, so I'm curious to see how these compare. The ink is always a bit stiff, so I loosen it up with my palette knives. Then I roll out a patch of ink with my roller, or brayer as it's also known. I like Brayer, it's more fun to say. Brayers. Hear that? That crackly sound is the sound of the right inconsistency for printing. It also has its own look and feel. 
let's roll. This always takes a few passes. And now let's see how good my carving was. Carefully. There, phew. Some hand pressure to start setting the ink. Since I don't have a press, I instead transfer all of my prints by hand with even careful and consistent pressure to apply the ink to the paper. And soon the shirts. A little peek? Ooh, not ready. All right, you ready? Cross your fingers. The test print is always the roughest and they get better the more I ink and transfer the block. Although, this is a pretty good start. Then I repeat on both paper and fabric. I had to adjust my ink consistency to get enough of an ink load for fabric. Hear how it sounds different and looks different? Let's try again, and again, and again. Inconsistency and printing pressure are two very simple principles, and yet the two hardest to get just right, especially on fabric, it seems. So I return to the ease of paper for testing the custom color mixes. And by the way, since my inks are oil-based, here is my non-toxic cleanup method. I wipe everything down with a cloth and vegetable oil. The vegetable oil is so good at helping clean up the oil inks and it's much gentler on my rubber blocks than a solvent. This stuff won't cure on its own though, it will go rancid. So it's really important that I wash up all the veggie oil with warm soap and water to make sure no veggie oil is left that could mix into future printing ink. And speaking of cleaning, it's time to wash the shirts. I skip using any softeners during drying as those can inhibit my inks. Then I iron out the wrinkles using the correct heat setting, which in this case was for cotton. I figure out exactly where I want my block and I use some tape to mark the sides and edges for perfect alignment later. By now I've kind of figured out the process and I've switched sprayers for starters. This sprayer inks better, and the other rolls better. I stick some plexi inside the shirt to ensure a smooth printing surface. Wish me luck. So close. I didn't get enough pressure in the center, the neck is a little faded. Let's try this again. I'll try to pay extra attention to the pressure. Thank you. 
Hey, that's pretty sweet. Let me just reprint the other one really quick. So much better. It was definitely worth printing it again. The final step is to heat set the ink so they last. After letting the shirts dry for about four weeks, I place newsprint over them to keep my iron clean and protect my print. The iron is set to cotton without steam and then I iron the surface for a few minutes. I loved this project so much and I can't believe I waited eight years to return to printmaking. I'm curious to see how these new inks hold up to wear and washing, and so far I'm really happy with the print results. I'm also so happy that hand printing worked well because I love that I now have my own horse art on shirts. I'll box up and mail around one to the person who got me interested in horses. So look Ma, you got to see how your shirt was made! 